Hello, I'm going to try this video again. Um, hopefully it doesn't disconnect, which is what happened to my last one. But here we are again, I'm going to start again and hopefully go through everything that I did last time. Um, welcome to the group if you're new. I'm so excited to see so many new faces in this group and it's really good to see you all uh, feeling comfortable and sharing your story and where you're at. Um, that's what I love to see and um, we have created such an amazing community here and everyone is just so supportive and um, it's just really great to see. So I'm so excited. Welcome to the group if you're new. We are on day eight of our 30 day Love Your Guts Nutrition Challenge. So if you are new and joined this week, go back last week and have a little bit of an overview of what we've covered so far. We've just gone over a few of the really basic things, um, you know, what are whole foods, what are in, uh, inflammatory foods, how these are really important for gut health and how to include them. We started with setting some goals and how to set some really powerful goals. And then we've moved on to how to create a macronutrient balanced meal. So. Emma did a video on this on Friday, really informative, some really great information and if you don't know where to start with nutrition, I really recommend going back on Friday and listening to this video because it's just um, applicable for every single woman in this group and really important for us to start with the basics. So macronutrients, we're covering carbohydrates, which I've done a video on, protein, which I've done a video on, and now we're on to fats, which is um, one of my favorites. So uh, we'll jump right into it. And remember, if you're watching this, um, I will be uploading it as a podcast as well, which may suit you a little bit better to be able to listen to. Um, and I will do another post with a bit of an overview of what I've covered in this video if you don't have time to listen to it. And if you have any questions as we go through, please feel free to just comment on the video below uh, in the comment section. <laughs> so fats, um, what are they? Why are they important? Why we need to include them? And what are the different types of fats that are available? So essentially any kind of food that has this beautiful macronutrient in it, fat, we're getting um, what we call essential fatty acids from that food. So um, essentially, these essential fatty acids are a part of every single cellular activity or all cell membranes. Um, so they're part of every activity. So, I mean, I could just leave this video here because that kind of sums up why and how they are so important. They're a part of every single cellular activity. So we obviously cannot get rid of them from our diet and we really need to be um careful of getting the right kind of fat which i'll go into very soon so what they also do is that they have the power to turn on our inflammatory response or turn off our infl inflammatory response so they have inflammatory and anti-inflammatory defenses which is so important especially when we're talking about digestive health because a lot of issues that we see coming up are the result of inflammation in the body so Fats are something that can really um, turn that inflammatory response maybe off or help reduce that in the body. So we really need to make sure we're including them. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so different kinds. You probably heard that we have saturated fats and we have unsaturated fats. So they're the two at the pyramid. So we have saturated, unsaturated. And then if we go across to the unsaturated, we have... Um, poly or we have um, mono unsaturated fats mono unsaturated fats and poly unsaturated fats so we can break that one off again and then underneath our poly unsaturated fats this is where we have the ones we recognize omega-3 omega-6 omega-9 so all of those beautiful essential fatty acids are under our poly unsaturated fat so um, let's go into some of them in specific. So we'll go into our omega-3, our omega-6 and omega-9 because these are the ones that are just so beautiful for us and these are the ones we really need to 
make sure we're including in our diet. So omega-6 um, builds up that resistance to infection. That's one of its main things. It's also really beautiful for brain health as well and brain cognition. Um, fats are so important for brain health. Um, they give you that clarity that you need. They give you that energy that you need. Um, so omega-6 is really important. Omega-3, um, this is the one that provides that anti-inflammatory response. So omega-3s are so, so important as well to try and um, reduce inflammation in the body. They're very effective for that. Um, and omega-3 is where we get our EPA and DHA, which we know are beautiful from, and we get that from fatty fish and things like that. Um, so omega-6, I guess, has sometimes been villainized a little bit. Like you could say that um, omega-6 has kind of had a bit of a bad rap. But the only reason is because we're seeing um, so many foods have a highly processed omega-6 in it. So um, I did a video on oils and or in inflammatory foods. And we're seeing heaps of hydrogenated, which is just highly processed fats in all of our foods. So things like canola oil and uh, sunflower oil and vegetable oil, they all have really high amounts of processed omega-6. And this is the one that we really want to avoid because it's actually really inflammatory for our bodies. But if we're getting pure, natural and beautiful omega-6, how it's meant to be and how nature intended. That is the one that's just so beautiful for brain health. Um, it's so important for the immune health and building up um, resistance to inf infection, so building up our immune system. And, um, yeah, brain health, immune health and omega-3 comes pretty naturally from a lot of fats um, and that's really important for that anti-inflammatory response. So, you know, some examples of omega-6 and omega-3 have like omega-3, flaxseed oil and then fish oil and cod liver oil. They're all so, so good, so like strong sources of omega-3. Uh, and then you have macadamia oil, grass-fed meat, eggs um, and seed, nuts and seeds as well. We all know that they have omega-3 and omega-6. Um, and all of these foods have a really um, good ratio of omega-3 to omega-6. So you may have heard that we need like a really balanced ratio of omega-3 to omega-6. So I think it's, don't quote me on this, but I think it's nine omega-3 to three omega-6, a ratio kind of like that. And the really cool thing is a lot of foods take care of that for you. And a lot of um, the fats that we can consume actually take care of that ratio for you. Um, so that's really cool. And then we have omega-9 as well. And these are things, this is in like avocado, olive oil, almonds, um, and eggs as well. So all of these three fats are the ones that I will continuously go on about because we really, really need them in our diet because one, they're a part of every cellular activity. Two, they're so important for brain health, so important for immune health, so important for reducing inflammation throughout the body. Um, and some other little benefits are they keep you fuller for longer. They make your food taste awesome. Um, and because they're so important for brain health, they give you that energy that you might be craving. Um, and they give you that clarity that maybe sometimes you really need um, throughout the day. So we can start to get all this if we start to include some really smart fats into our nutrition. So that's our unsaturated fat. And then if we move across to saturated fat, so the two kinds, um, saturated fat is like your ghee, your coconut oil, um, animal meat also 
is really high in saturated fat and things like dark chocolate as well, really good in saturated fat, emphasis on the dark because <laughs> um, some people might take that um, a different way. So <laughs> saturated fats, I think they also get a pretty bad rap. I know there's been a lot of controversy about coconut oil um, and all of that, but when you bring it all back to basics, um, you have to remember that, yeah, too much fat can probably not be the best for you, but also if we come back to our macronutrient balanced meals, um, you know, we need like a good serving of fat with every meal, helps nutrient absorption. Um, so I think it was a thumb or a tablespoon uh, in a meal. So cooking in really great oils, adding you know, a tablespoon of seeds or nuts on top of your meal, um, having some avocado or having, including a really beautiful grass-fed fatty meat, you're going to get these, um, a mix of saturated, of unsaturated, of your omega-3, 6 and 9 in a meal, which is so, so good for you. Keeps you fuller, it halts your cravings. Um, so yeah, really, really prioritize fats in your meal. Um, so saturated fats, they really help the absorption of our um, fat-soluble vitamins, so A, D, E and K. So whenever you're eating vegetables or um, things like that, if you add a little, you know, maybe just cook it in coconut oil, the coconut oil actually really assists in the absorption process of those vitamins, which is really cool. Um, and they have a, a really unique uh, profile, which is, you may have heard of this as um, triglycerides. Um, and the really good thing about these is that they, increase energy they have they have such a good source of energy so um don't be scared of fats that's my main message here because i think there's been a bit of a fear of including fats in meals for a while i think it's slowly starting to go down but um i do think people are a little bit scared of including beautiful fats in their macronutrient balanced meals but keyword being balanced and so you shouldn't have any fear of fats because we need them we really really need them um, yeah, I think I've kind of covered my main message here, but I mean, from personal experience, uh, when I was going through my, um, time of healing my gut, um, something that kept popping up over and over were my hormones and they were a little bit imbalanced, which is, um, not unusual when you have digestive issues, but I really took a look at my nutrition and, um, my fats were way too low and I knew that and I did have a little bit of fear of increasing my fats but as soon as I did my hormones started to balance out um you know my skin started to really clear up which is another really important thing when we have when we reduce fats in our nutrition we start to see dry skin and um things like eczema and psoriasis start to arise because we're not getting those nutrients we need um, but yeah, when I started to increase my fats and, um, you know, started to love them rather than have a fear of them, um, yeah, my hormones just did a whole 180 and it was just, and my energy as well, like I'd never had so much energy before. So I really recommend, especially for females, um, if you are going through, you know, digestive issues, obviously, and also hormonal issues and just take a step back and have a look at what fats you're including in your nutrition because the best thing we can all do is focus on including more so more fatty fish, things like sardines, salmon um, and eggs, grass-fed meat, um, flaxseed oil, things like that. They're just so high in omega-3 and that's one of the really important things that, you know, as women we really need. So, yeah, it's just so important. Um, so I have a task for you, not just for today, but for the rest of this month and hopefully.